Amanda, and I'll be talking about counterfactual risk assessments, evaluation, and fairness, which is joint work with Alan, Edward, and Alex. In many settings, professionals make decisions about individuals, and they increasingly use algorithmic risk assessments to help them make those decisions. The risk assessments estimate the probability of an adverse outcome. For instance, the probability of failing a course may help teachers decide which students need additional resources, or the probability of adverse child welfare outcomes may help social workers decide which cases to investigate. These risk assessments are typically trained and evaluated on observed outcomes in historical data, but this can be problematic because the outcomes can depend on the historical decisions, as we can now see with a stylized example. Our goal is to build a risk assessment to identify which students need a tutor in order to pass a course. Imagine that we have data on how students did during the course and on the final exam. And you could build a model that uses the homework grades to predict the exam score. But observe that this student was struggling. And perhaps this struggling student got extra resources, like a tutor, to prepare them for the exam. And perhaps that's actually why they passed the exam. And had they not been tutored, then they would have failed. So we see that the outcome can depend on the decision taken. In causal inference, these are known as potential outcomes. They are counterfactual outcomes that we would observe if we made a particular decision, where the decision is noted in the superscript on why the outcome. So we have the why we would see if the student was tutored, and why we would see if they were not tutored, which I've used a zero to indicate. This contrasts with the literature on counterfactual fairness that considers counterfactuals of the protected attribute. In our work, we're focusing on counterfactuals of the decision at hand. We never observe both potential outcomes. Instead, each student is either tutored or not tutored, and we observe the corresponding potential outcome. So this student was tutored, and then we uh, observe that they pass. This observed outcome is commonly the target of risk assessments. And that tells us the likelihood of failure under the observed historical decisions. But that's not actually aligned with our goal which was to identify who needs a tutor in order to pass a course. This would require us to answer a different question. What is the likelihood of failure if not tutored? And this is a general problem. In a lot of settings, we want to estimate risk under some baseline decision, which here is no tutoring. A risk assessment that targets Y0 answers this question of what is the likelihood of failure if we don't tutor. So we see that using the counterfactual outcome is important in learning a model of risk. This is also important when we consider evaluating risk assessments. An observational approach evaluates against Y, which tells us how well a model predicts the observed outcomes of the historical decisions. This contrasts against the counterfactual approach, which evaluates against Y0, telling us how well a new model predicts the outcomes under the baseline decision of no tutoring. And this distinction also applies to fairness assessments. An observational audit uses why and tells us if the model is a fair predictor of who passes under the historical decisions. But what we actually want to know is whether the model is a fair predictor of who passes under the baseline decision, which is what a counterfactual fairness assessment would tell us. In our paper, we describe methods for this full pipeline of counterfactual learning, evaluation, and fairness assessments. We also theoretically and empirically demonstrate the risks of observational or the adverse unintended consequences of observational approaches. An observational approach to learning underestimates risk of those receptive to treatment. Observational evaluation may select a model that is not aligned with our goal. For instance, the model that perfectly predicts who will fail without a tutor will observationally appear to have a high false positive rate. And an observational fairness audit may mistake bias in historical decision making with model bias. We perform experiments on both synthetic 
and real-world child welfare data to demonstrate that observational approaches can be misleading. For instance, here we compare uh, for the real-world child welfare data the risk distributions of a counterfactual model in the first row to an observational model in the second row. And they differ significantly on their assessment of risk for the tutored population, uh, which is given in red. And um, what we observe is that they, uh, the observational model suggests that this population is low risk, uh, but in fact they only appear to be low risk because they were treated. And making future decisions based on such an assessment may lead us to fail to treat those who actually benefit from treatment. Uh, this is also important, important for fairness audits. So uh, if the fairness auditing question is do the model predictions Y hat have equal false positive rate by gender, then the answer depends on whether we evaluate against Y or Y0. The common approach of evaluating against Y would suggest that the false positive rates are different by gender, but against the outcome we actually want to predict, we see that they are not different. And so, uh, the model here is actually not biased, but the observational audit suggested that it was because it incorrectly considered cases where treatment reduced risk as false positives, uh, but observed that the treatment assignment was unfair because both the male and female student were at risk, but only the male student got the extra resources. This was the source of bias that the observational audit wrongly attributed to the model. Uh, and this can make a big difference when we're thinking about like fairness correcting. So if you, were, uh, if you had an observational approach to this and saw that the false positive rates were different by gender and decide to do something like a post-processing method to fix that, um, then we show here that this can actually exacerbate these initial disparities in the treatment assignment. These are counterfactual ROC curves and we see that actually originally there was no difference but uh, post-processing for fairness induces a disparity at the expense of the female students who are the ones that were already hurt by the unfair treatment assignment. And the reason that we can uncover this unintended consequence is because we're looking at the counterfactual ROC curves, which look at recall and false positive rate in terms of Y0. And we do this uh, using the method described in our paper that makes use of doubly robust estimation techniques from causal inference. And we find that this effect can occur when the treatment assignment varies according to the protected attribute or when the outcomes under treatment vary according to the protected attribute. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh